Say thank you to everybody. We've been this gallery and well, everybody in the team has been so supportive of me for so long. I'm not gonna cry today. Don't cry. Not gonna start falling like a little girl. Uh, but you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients and fine paintings, and that's the big thing. So, and Karen has done such a brilliant job, and I think everybody knows the whole thing that's going on with her. So, if we could just all be, let's all wish her the best and Ava the best, and uh, you know. So, other than that, we can just do questions or whatever. I have. I was thinking I was desperately sitting there going, "Wait a fuck." <laughs> uh, I have a few vignettes that I want to, of my past history, because time has just gone on. I mean, everybody I know is like, oh my God, she played with yesterday, and that was like 40 years ago, 35 years ago. But uh, I will regale you with those short, and I'll keep it short. But other than that, I thought if you guys just want to ask questions, I can just spitball whatever. Yes? So I noticed a lot of the eyes, to me, seem sad. Do you see her as inflective or sad? Uh, I don't know if it's deliberate or not. It's uh, uh, I don't know where that comes from. You know, I think the weird thing about painting is, as much as you uh, try to control things or invent things and according to your own thing, uh, I think a lot of it just comes out. You know, something else comes out of the well. You try to you start out with one idea and then you're like. Wait, and you think you paint like crazy all night or whatever, and then you get up in the morning and the light changes and you walk in the studio and you go, where'd that come from or whatever. I mean, you know, I think a lot of it is somewhat unintentional, so I don't know where that, uh, that comes from. I think lately a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of weird shit in the world, so, uh, you know. Uh, Did you write your artist statement? No, I've never written an art statement. <laughs> I don't believe in them. I always thought, when they, have, when they have big writers things in New York City or whatever, they don't ask the writer, like, will you draw a little picture for us? <laughs> but what your book is about? <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I like Gustav Klimt, he had the best one. He said, I, I think landscapes and women, no, this is art statement. <laughs> Rosowski, how, how is it? because you're obviously related to Velasquez, not at that time. <laughs> well, you know, this man. Well, the first time I walked by this place, I looked through the window, and oh, he lives. It was like... Well, I think that the other day, it's just, you know, uh, it's been a big um, old tradition of existing forms of painting, and I just, Yvonne just gave me, there's a big show in, in New York right now with the, uh, Degas and Manet, like, can you imagine being at that show or whatever, and she has to give me the book for it or whatever. And just, I've just been in awe of people that really paint well or whatever, and now I think these days that's not even a PC thing. <laughs> it's not even necessarily a good thing to tell anybody, but uh, it just, I, I am in awe of that, of that kind of work. and. I mean, obviously, no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to really be in that league or whatever, but you can, you got to try and... <laughs> the love of darkness is real big. It really pops to the Well, yeah, I just, I think my printmaking background, you know, that's where I started, so 10 years of printmaking in black and white, and it uh, kind of just, once you learn to kind of make images in that fashion, yeah. that kind of ends up, uh, and that might be in a subconscious thing as well, the amount of dark. Some days it's like, Adam, your paints are pretty, but they are. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Adam, what's the process of making your paintings? What's that? What's your process? Uh, again, it starts with underpaintings, kind of like these, you know, like the nude right behind you is just like an underpainting with a little bit of color over the top of it. You know, you start with that. Uh, it's kind of a value-based thing with, uh, just light and dark, and then we kind of set up the composition and you set up your edges, and then once that's dry, then you can go in and start layering in color. And again, that's my, I just realized, even after all these years of doing this, I, I know nothing about color, and it's just a, you know, you just have to kind of, I just keep like, this one, you get out there, and open her down, or whatever. I mean, it's not really like that, but I don't have the kind of innate, 
understanding of, of color. Like I, I think when you learn in black and white, you know, like my mom was a really good color effect thing, and I'm sure she had some training in college or whatever that hopefully informed your brain. But uh, uh, then I was realizing the other day, thinking of Degas, he said at the end of his life, he said, if I had to do it all over again, I would have just stuck to black and white. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But you know, uh, the other thing I'm realizing lately, which in the last, this whole last, because I painted most of these things in the last 10 days after the whole first <laughs> show or whatever, is just uh, minimal, but how to do the most with the least amount. And a lot of, especially with color, a lot of, like, look at the nude. I mean, that's like a tiny amount of color in the right place instead of my usual thing is like, just keep beating on it. And, paint harder and it'll get better, which <laughs> usually it doesn't. But, uh, yeah. Do you paint every day? Uh, pretty well, five days a week, usually at least. Normally, if the river's okay, then I can go to the river to walk on my wire, so I get some exercise and get out of the fumes and the whole thing, but but sometimes you're just, you have to get the cows in the barn, so you <laughs> just have to, you know, have to paint hard when the show is it's gonna happen. You have to get. You have to be done. When, uh, and I kind of like it because once you get ahead of steam and just start painting like crazy, a lot of times you get some really good. I mean, you get some really bad things, but you get some good things as well. So. Would you like to paint less at night? Uh, I usually start. I usually I'm, when I'm painting really hard, I do two sessions. I do one in the daytime, then I take a break or whatever, and I come back. And, it's nice at night because of the, the light is a little more controlled in the studio. You don't have as many, like lately a couple times the sun came out of nowhere in the last 10 days and it's like, that's great, but I can't see shit. And, like, I can't tell what I'm painting on because the light is coming in the window and it, I can't see what I'm doing. So, but uh, I like painting at night, you know, it's kind of. But, uh, okay, let me tell you the story. Quick, I'll make it quick because this is such a history. But at the beginning of my opening, I moved to Eugene. I had $400 in my pocket. My dad's Carmen Gia. He, you know, he just died seven years earlier. And, when was that? What year? Uh, 1986 or something. And I got my job at Cafe Zena, and I was like a host. I had no money or whatever. <laughs> then I was painting, and I'd been a printmaker, you know, graduate school for you know, six years and four years in undergrad. And then I came to Eugene, I was like, I want to be a painter. So I rented this studio and like tried to teach myself how to paint. <laughs> I was like, dude, you don't know, this is, was an ass kicking anyway. Uh, so then it's like, one, you know, dude, you can't be a waiter for, I wasn't even a waiter then, I think I was still like a host or whatever. So it's like, you have to go up to the big city and, you know, check out the galleries. You have to bring some work up there. And I was kind of scared shitless. It's like, damn it. And it was winter time. And I had this uh, 1964 GMC van that I had for windsurfing, which was awesome, but it was old and it had bald tires and I was broke and I didn't have any insurance. And it was, of course there was like an ice storm the night before. And, so, you know, <laughs> and I had my little list of galleries to go to in Eugene, you know, in Portland, starting with like the best one, Laura Russo, and I went down there. The fourth best one or the second best one was Ogden or whatever. But I went to the first and I got up there and I was driving. I was like, dude, you get busted and you don't have any insurance and you're, you know, you're gonna wreck and like, your tires are bald and you're freezing because the heater didn't work, you know. And I got up there and of course the first three galleries were like, <laughs> like you stupid fuck, what are you even doing in here? Like you didn't send slides, you didn't do anything, you know. I was like, humility, you know, it was like a giant beat down. And it was so cold, I was so pain. It's like, all you have left is Ogden. It's like, well, I really wanted Ogden. It's like my first choice or whatever. And I drove down there and it was almost dark and I could see they were closing. They were starting to close. And it was Bob, the owner, and his yuppie woman, that, uh, Victoria, who was you know, the manager there or whatever. And I was like, I remember sitting in the van, just like, dude, your life is over. You're never gonna make it. There's nothing, it's not gonna work. You know, and then I was like, well, go knock on the door or whatever. And I think, you know, I was like, hair was all wet from the sleet or whatever, and I knocked, and Bob came to the door, and I was like, can I show you some paintings? I think he took pity on me. He was just like, you know, he, like, you fucking moron. It's like 5.30 for one thing, and we're closing, you know? And uh, so he's like, okay, kid, you, you bring in a couple paintings, and we'll look, I'll take a quick look at them or whatever. So I ran out to the van and brought in these two big paintings. 
And then he went down, you know, he was sitting there and Victoria was, you know, she came over and did the whole, <laughs> you know, and then, then Bob was like, what do you think, Victoria? And she's like, I don't think so, Bob, you know, I don't think this is going to work for us or whatever. And it's just like, you know, and just, but Bob was sitting there looking really hard, I could tell. He was like, just looking. And then I was like, dude, you better act now or you're going down the drain or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and I was like hey, who wears the pants in here anyway, Bob? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> And then he was like, he was like, okay, kid, I tell you, we'll put two, we'll put these two pieces in. We have a group show in the in two months or whatever. We'll put these pieces in. If you move something, we'll we'll go from there or whatever. And both the paintings sold like in the first day of the group show. So from there, you know. Oh, I do. Uh, uh, do you know? Well, one of them was a standing kind of new figure and the other one was a figure in the bathtub after Bernard that was like a great again when I didn't know what I was doing. My mom again always told me you were a better painter when you didn't know what, what you were doing. <laughs> Which leads me to the second story and I'll make it brief but so I got a, a one person show and it was in the summer and you know I worked my ass off did the whole thing and my mom flew up from San Francisco or whatever and you know, I remember I was so stressed out and I went outside and back in the day, everybody smoked. I smoked marble lights or whatever and I was so stressed out and people started coming down the street in Portland and, you know, started filtering in and, you know, and then I was like, what if nobody buys anything and I'm a total loser and this sucks or whatever, you know, and it was just like, so the stress is almost overwhelming and I went outside and I remember in this, because back in the day, Algon was on 2nd Street. It was kind of a dingy neighborhood, and there was this alleyway, and I went back in the alley. I was so, I was smoking a cigarette, and I was just like, I remember I put my head on the bricks, on the wet bricks on this thing, and I just, I never, I'm not religious, as I said earlier, or whatever, but I was like, God, please, like, your family raised you to do this. You, you have to, like, what if like, nothing happens and this sucks or whatever? And I was like, please, please make something happen. You know, and then it's like, compose yourself to and go back inside, put your cigarette out, go back inside. And all the people were in there and the champagne, and everybody's, and all of a sudden red dots just started. Fucking one and after another, and my mom, Vera, is sitting in the, in the middle of the room, this after like two hours, and they kept selling more paintings, and I was like, oh my God. Like, and I walked away, I sidled up to mom, you know, it's like, what, what do you think, mom? <laughs> you no, know, I didn't say what he did. I was just like, you know, kind of sitting there like, <laughs> and she looked right at me, and my mom has this way of looking at me, like she looks right through you or whatever. And she just went, <clears throat> remember, son, at the end of the day, you're just a wall decorator for the rich. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, those are the only two stories I'm going to make you sit through, but that's kind of that. that was, that's what I'm wow. Thank you everybody for coming and uh, thanks for all your support for all the years for all the people that have been so good to me and everybody keep your send good energy to Karn and Ava. Yeah. Yeah. So have a drink and enjoy yourself. Anybody else needs to, any questions or anything? No, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Oh. I think he's on to hey. something. You know, less is more. And, and being intuitive, just trusting your gut. Yeah, you know. that's not going to be.